Closed captioning is sponsored by Shark Coatings. The Olympic Zone on West 2 is sponsored by Advent Health, champion of the human spirit. Coming up on the Olympic Zone, when Olympic gold is on the line and races are won by thousands of a second, who's keeping watch for the winner? We measure the start of a race, we measure reaction times, and then the athletes will wear sensors in their bid numbers. And... Closing the distance. To be able to see other women winning in sports, whether it's Team USA or around the world, is, is really amazing. Why these games are one for the history books. Plus, crash course. Running, climbing, leaping. One of the Olympics' oldest events gets a modern makeover. Our dream was, oh, maybe one day we will be Olympics. That's next on the Olympic Zone. This is the Olympic Zone on West 2, live from Universal Orlando Resort. Hello and welcome to the Olympic Zone. I'm Stuart Moore. And I'm Michelle Imperato. Today is day 13 of the Olympic Games in Paris. And since the Games began, we have been bringing you all of the action here at Universal Orlando City Walk. We have a live audience and they are hyped tonight. The crowd has been with us throughout and they are really here tonight because they're excited all the highlights we're going to show you lots of surprising endings today for the athletes we've been following throughout these games for the past several weeks. Okay, before we bring you the highlights, a spoiler alert, everything here has already aired on TV, but some of it will be on primetime tonight. So let's dig in. A shocking finish in the much-anticipated men's 200-meter final. Botswana's Letzile Tobogo took the gold medal. It is a race that many thought would go to American sprinter Noah Lyles, who ran the race while sick with COVID. Instead, his fellow teammate, Kenny Bednarak, took home the silver medal, finishing in 19.62 seconds. Lyles was attempting to be the first man since Usain Bolt to win both the 100 and 200 meter sprints, but instead, he finished third. And look at this, he was gasping for air at the finish. He was taken off the track in a wheelchair by his medical team. Lyles tested positive on Tuesday. That was a surprise, this one was not. The queen of hurdles keeps her crown. Sidney McLaughlin Lavrone won gold today in the fourth. 400 meter hurdles and set a new world record in the process. She holds a winning streak that goes all the way back to the 2019 World Championships. She far outpaced her biggest rival, Dutch sprinter Pimke Bowl, who took the bronze. Sydney's teammate, Anna Cockrell, swooped in for the silver medal. It's like no one's even close to her. No one. And Florida, Shakari Richardson returned to the track today, leading the 4 by 100 meter relay team to the final. Richardson saved the team from collapse. She was about three steps behind after receiving receiving the baton from Gabby Thomas, who had a rough handoff from Twanisha Terry, but Richardson was able to pull ahead, and the U.S. ended up winning the heat. The final is set for tomorrow. Meanwhile, the United States men's relay team will also head to the final, but in another unexpected turn of the track, the men's Jamaican team will not get a shot at gold. They missed the final by .06 seconds. Jamaica, known as a powerhouse in this event, still hold the world record from the Usain Bolt days. A sign that the 2024 Olympics will soon come to an end. The U.S. flag bearers for the closing ceremony have been picked. Gold medalist Katie Ledecky and Nick Mead will hold that honor. Katie Ledecky had an incredible run at these games, becoming the United States' most decorated female Olympian. Her teammate Bobby Fink told her the good news bringing her to tears. And rowing's Nick Mead will join her. He helped lead the men's four team to win their first gold medal since 1960. The two were chosen in a vote from all of the athletes on Team USA. And there are just days left to determine which country will come home with the most gold medals. It's pretty tight out there. Right now, the United States has the most at 30 gold medals, 103 total. China's in second at 29. 73 overall. France trails in third. They have 14 gold and 54 overall medals. Coverage of the Paris Olympics is brought to you locally on NBC by Nissan. 
Coming up on the Olympic Zone, turning back time. What actually goes into creating the photo finish that we then see on TV? Plus, growing the game, why millions of new fans have Luke's fever. And she's got it. Why the next Olympics could look like this iconic competition. Ahead on the Olympic Zone. And before we go to break, let's check out tomorrow's forecast for Paris and the Olympics. They have a high of 80 degrees. That is not too shabby. Stay with us. We'll be right back. The Olympic Forecast is sponsored by Attorney Dan Newlin. Welcome back to the Olympic Zone live at Universal Orlando City Walk, where we've got another live audience out here to check us out. During any Olympic Games, races are close and records are shattered. The precision needed to record and measure these events could be considered an Olympic event in itself. Kira Dixon learns more about the timing on the track. Coming up on the Olympic Zone, leveling the playing field. Know that we have to just continue to use our voices. How women are reshaping the sports landscape. Plus, we're going to need to start training. So, what do you say? Should we? Oh, here we go. <laughs> Next. And time for some more Olympic trivia. This one should be easy. What year did the United States NBA Dream Team participate in the Olympics? The answer: 1992 in Barcelona. That team included Michael Jordan, Scottie Pippen, Magic Johnson, Larry Bird, Charles Barkley, and several others you may have heard of. They were coached by Chuck Daly. They're known as the greatest basketball team ever assembled. We'll be right back. Tonight's Olympic fun facts are sponsored by Publix. Central Florida is home. We rise for the challenges each new day brings and spend time each evening focused on what matters most to us. At WESH 2, we understand what's important. That's why we focus on you, so that you can understand and be understood. It's in these moments, these shared experiences, that we connect, a bond that brings us all closer. This is WESH 2 News. These games have been unlike any other. The opening ceremony in the River Seine, beach volleyball in the shadow of the Eiffel Tower. But there's one other reason these games will be remembered as one for the history books. Ann Thompson has more on how the 2024 games is breaking barriers. These women are absolutely incredible, and you know there are little girls all around the world just watching these games saying, I want to do that when I grow up. I think it's telling because every single night when we sit over there, we say, I'm looking forward to whatever women's the women's event is the I next know, day. I know, I know. Okay, I thought that was just me. <laughs> <laughs> all right, here's a look what's coming up next on the Olympic Zone. Coming up on the Olympic Zone, how this sport is going from playgrounds to the podium. Ahead on the Olympic Zone. Tonight's Florida Athlete Spotlight is on Shakari Richardson. The world champion lives right here in Claremont. This is her first ever Olympics, and so far, she's already picked up a silver medal in the 100 meter, and she competes in the 4 by 100 meter relay tomorrow. Tonight's Florida Athlete Profile is sponsored by your Southern Lexus dealers. century, men and women have competed in swimming, running, fencing, shooting, and equestrian in the modern pentathlon. But after Paris, the sport will live up to its name, modernizing with a new element. Gotti Schwartz has more on the changes swinging into L.A. In prime time. Hi there, Mike Tirico coming up in prime time. More gold medals up for grabs on the track. Several Americans in contention for them. It's the men's 200 meters and Noah Lyles looking to sprint his way to the top of the podium once again. In the men's 110 meter hurdles, Grant Holloway hopes to translate his strong form into a gold of his own. As these games have shown so far, expect top-notch drama in those races. What a finish! And elsewhere too. It's all ahead on primetime in Paris. The Olympic Zone, brought to you by Delta Airlines, official airline of Team USA. At Delta, we measure our flights in minutes, not just miles. Because we know...
time is our most precious resource. Every journey takes it. But no matter how long your journey takes you, how you spend that time can make all the difference. Okay, so you probably heard that a 14-year-old, Arisa True, won the gold medal in the Women's Skate Park final this week, and she became the youngest Australian to ever win an Olympic medal like that. But it's what she's asking for that's got a yeah. lot of people talking online. Kids ask for the darndest things. <laughs> she asked for a duck to celebrate her big win. She I asked her parents, not for a dog or cat, she's asking for a duck. She says she's looking forward to taking it on walks and to the skate park. That's going to be the coolest know. duck at the park. It, it, Probably it the only be. duck. It should be. I, I hope it's got a good name. <laughs> okay, what, what we are you looking for tomorrow? Wait. I do have some news. Yes. Go to get some news. Noah Lyles has announced he is done for the rest of these games, so he will not participate in the 4x1 or the 4x4. Obviously, he announced today that he had COVID, but still won a bronze medal with COVID today. Okay, but we do have some other relays happening tomorrow, like Shakari Richardson's relay. I'm super excited to see her compete. And breaking starts yes. tomorrow. Finally. Victor Montalvo will yes. finally take to the mat. And he's from Kissimmee. Looking forward to seeing him out there. We got all the games, everything covered for you tomorrow right here on the Ozone. We need to say a big thank you to our crowd who came out live to watch the Universal <laughs> Orlando Resort. All right, we'll see you back here tomorrow. The Olympic Zone on West 2 is sponsored by Advent Health, champion of the human spirit.